Hey, what's going on YouTube? So today we are talking about a growing concern out there, catalytic converter theft, coming up. So I'm guessing if you clicked on this video, you are either concerned about catalytic converter theft or you already had it happen to you. Today we are going to install something to try and prevent that from happening to us. Behind me we have a 2017 Tacoma and uh, I will show you what we got. If you don't already know, catalytic converters are quite expensive to replace and so it's really frustrating when they get stolen. So I got something here to install on the bottom side of the truck to try and uh, deter thieves. It's nothing's 100% when you're talking to thieves, but uh, at least if you can deter them from stealing yours and move on, then I guess we win. So right here, we have a catalytic converter shield or something like that. Uh, it's called Cat Security. Looks like it's from, it, it looks like it's made from Cap City Muffler. I purchased this from Mid-Atlantic Off-Roading. They did not send it to me for free. They are not paying me for this. Neither is the manufacturer of this product. I paid for this with the money generated from YouTube. Just wanna make that clear. So that will have no effect on how I feel about this product. If you're curious, here is the barcode and the product. It does say on here, professional installation recommended. No, I'm not a professional, but this does not seem like it's that difficult of a job to do. Nice color instructions on here. It does say something about one of the items in here. They are called Riv Nuts. I've never heard of them or seen them before. When I search them on YouTube, uh, I, it seems like a lot of the people doing videos on them are Australian. So maybe some of you know better than me out there. Is this an item that's used more in Australia than in the United States. If you know, leave a comment in the comment section below. There is a tool to install them and they range anywhere from like 40 to $80 on Amazon. I chose not to get one because this is the first time I've ever needed one. And there are DIY ways to do that. And we're all about DIY here. So we might as well do that. And it does not look like my dad had one of these. I looked through the tools again, and it did not look like he had one. So we're gonna do the DIY method today, or at least try it. And this is what they look like. They go through a drilled hole, and then they kinda, you kinda crimp it on there like a rivet. And it flattens out and bites onto the material. So it does have the installation of four of those we're supposed to drill holes for those four. So here's what we got in the box. It comes in three pieces. It's aluminum. I believe they might have a steel one as well. I chose to go with aluminum. I feel like aluminum's usually a little bit more challenging to cut through because it has a tendency to gum up the blade. And then we have two pieces. They'll go on the sides, kind of like wings. I'll show you this because uh, once we get underneath there, I don't know how well the camera is going to, how good of an angle I'm gonna be able to get with the camera because we're doing this in my garage and I don't have a lift. So we're gonna be laying on the floor and doing this. Not the end of the world. We're in the garage, concrete floor, but it's a little warm out here, so. Well, I'm sure the impact is enough. I just wanna give it a little bit of a double check. It doesn't come with any sort of torque settings. All right, so I apologize if there's any wind noise from the cooler. It is hot out here and I have the cooler blowing right underneath here. So we loosened up the passenger side and the driver's side I completely removed. We should be able to get it in here without uh, removing both of them. This is one of the catalytic converters underneath here. 
There is one on the opposite side, on the driver's side. So we got two of them. I have it loosely mocked up in here, and that's because we need to drill four holes, and then we'll have to remove it to install those rev nuts I was talking about. So I have the 7 16th bit in, and I can tell you that it will not be easy to drill the holes all the way through with this. I can at least kind of get it marked and centered with the larger bit. All right, so honestly, those holes were not very much fun to drill at this angle, but I got it done. Now I have to take this back down and put the rivet nuts or rib nuts, whatever you want to call them, in. So this is the DIY tool that we're going to use. It's just a bolt with a nut and a washer. I found this thick one and the extra ones that I have. We're going to stick that up in the hole, hold the lower one and tighten this one and it should set the nut. If you want an actual tool, I will leave a link in the description if you want to go and check that out there. But I don't foresee myself using these. I've never used them before. And I don't know if I'll use them again. I don't know. And I didn't want to spend the money on it. Or more importantly, I didn't want to wait on the tool. Okay, so the first one wasn't working. So this is what we're going to try. This is just a stack of nuts that are not the same threading. They're a little bit larger. So they're not threaded on there, they're just being used as spacers. We'll see if this works. That seemed to work. I don't think it's going anywhere. And the four rib nuts are installed. The impact was much easier to use to install those. To bolt this up in here, it does say not to use the thread locker on these bolts. We have a long bolt that goes through the center. We use that to help mock it up. We'll also reinstall that. Now I've seen other videos and I don't know if they've changed this. They use just this plate and then a locking nut on top. Well, my kit came with a rib nut installed in this plate. So it looks like we actually install this on top of the rail and then the bolt goes up into that. I have it loosely in place. I still have the four bolts to insert into the rib nuts. It goes star washer, then the big washer. And if you think that washers are directional just like me, go ahead and give this video a like. So overall, this was not too difficult of an install. It was definitely something we were able to do ourselves. And I saw a video that another person posted. It was a good video, nice and short to the point, probably better than mine. It came with an extra piece that actually went right up in here and bolted to the transmission. But he did not specify. That's actually for the two wheel drive model this is the four wheel drive model, so it just comes with the three pieces. The two wheel drive comes with an extra plate to go up in there. It comes straight down right in here. But since mine is a four wheel drive, it didn't need that extra piece. So you can see one of the catalytic converters is right here and it does cover them up. And hopefully this will make it a little bit more secure. So that's the install for, of the cap security catalytic converter shield. 
is pretty easy install. They make them for a bunch of different vehicles. I will put links to both websites down there. Uh, like I said, I bought it from Mid-Atlantic Off-Roading, but you can go directly to their website where you can find more options. I didn't know that it came from somebody else. I just found it at Mid-Atlantic. So I will put both links in the description. I do park my truck in my garage. The only time that it's outside my garage is usually when I'm working out here. So it's not parked outside overnight, but I was kind of concerned when I'm out and about or when I'm parked at the airport and I'm flying, I was kind of concerned then. So I just didn't want to take any chances. Plus I wanted to do something that might help the rest of you out because I'm sure there's plenty of you that park your truck outside overnight when it's most vulnerable. Like I said, they have several different models for different years, different vehicles, different makes, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, all that stuff. And you can go to their website and see what they have for your vehicle. And hopefully they have something that will work for you. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. It's something that you can do yourself or you can take it to a professional and they can do it for you, of course. Just charge you a whole lot more. And if you're interested, I do have a whole playlist on my Tacoma and things that I've done to it. That's not the only thing I do on this channel. I'm a do-it-yourselfer type of channel. I tackle all sorts of different DIY projects, or at least try to, see if it'll work out, and hopefully help you guys out, try and save some money. So that does it for this video, and we will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.